In the schoolyard, three delinquents play ball, one of whom expresses his dislike for a classmate, the perfect Sakamoto. At sushi, Mario, and Ken, the delinquents, are jealous of Sakamoto's popularity, not just with women but throughout the school, and decide to make his life miserable. Sakamoto, the coolest student in class and perhaps the entire school, excels at everything he does and does it with style. The delinquents start the day with a prank on Sakamoto, placing an eraser on the door so it would fall on him and cover him in chalk, but thanks to his reflexes, Sakamoto catches the eraser, impressing everyone with his skill. Later, Sakamoto goes to the bathroom, and the delinquents throw water at him from a bucket through the bathroom door, not knowing that the foresight Sakamoto had an umbrella handy, so he doesn't get wet at all. Later, Sakamoto's desk disappears, courtesy of the bullies, but when all the girls offer him a place at their own desks, the young man opens the window and studies sitting on the ledge, while an angelic light shines on him, enchanting his peers alike. Finally, tired of the pranks, the delinquents decide to honor their name and beat up Sakamoto, so they trick him into going to the school's photography room and ambush him, locking him in with them. However, the delinquents accidentally start a fire when they spill some chemicals, and to make matters worse, another accident has left them locked in the room. Sakamoto frees himself from the bindings, and seeing that the delinquents have panicked, decides it's his turn to save the day. Sakamoto starts running around the fire, and the delinquents think he's trying to put it out, so they join him and start running. A teacher arrives and extinguishes the fire, so Sakamoto reveals that he was actually running to make noise and be rescued. Sakamoto takes responsibility for the accident, and the delinquents fall for his charm, becoming his admirers. Later, Sakamoto walks in the rain and sees how the wind carries away a little bird, so he decides to help it and, fighting against the wind and using his umbrella to gain height, rescues the bird. At school, Sarah, a student who is also a part-time model, shows off his photos published in a magazine, but a classmate arrives with a newspaper that on the front page has a photo of Sakamoto rescuing the bird, in which he appears to be flying. Jealous that Sakamoto is always the center of attention, Sarah decides to end him by slandering and ruining his reputation, but all his attempts only serve to strengthen the popularity of our protagonist. Later, during class, a hornet invades the classroom. Sarah seizes the opportunity to attack the hornet, but when he was about to be endangered, Sakamoto engages in a sword fight with one against the bee's stinger and manages to neutralize the situation without harming it. After enduring the previous humiliation, Sarah decides to become a comedian and invites Sakamoto, but the young man refuses. From the top of the tree, where Sakamoto is trying to feed a bird, our protagonist manages to observe the constant harassment suffered by her companion Kubota, and because of which he constantly loses money. Sakamoto observes the situation and does not plan to help him until Kubota begs for his help as he will not have money forever and they will harass him again. Sakamoto then decides to help him by getting him a job at a fast food restaurant. Although Sakamoto performs well in his job, as he does in all areas of his life and with style, Kubota finds it somewhat more difficult at first, but quickly begins to improve his performance. During work hours, the bullies who harass Kubota show up at the place to buy their lunch and observe the moment when they are giving him his pay, so, at the end of the workday, they charge at Kubota to take his money again. However, with the help of Sakamoto who appears at the right moment, and with Kubota's new techniques, both characters manage to confront the bullies and defeat them. Before leaving, Sakamoto praises Kubota's secret technique and advises him to perfect it. The second arc focuses entirely on Aina's attempts to flirt with Sakamoto, but they end in continuous failures. Aina has a series of techniques to seduce men that she applies with Sakamoto, but none work because Sakamoto, unconsciously, blocks all her techniques with his way of doing things. Aina's last technique is to invite Sakamoto to play Kakuri, a kind of necromancy game, but Yagi and Tanaka interfere, who offer to play with her. However, everything darkens when, accidentally, they cause Sakamoto to be possessed by a spirit while he was watching the game. This spirit orders the three girls to build him a bow, promising that by doing so, he would leave Sakamoto alone. 
Yagi and Tanaka get to work and begin to build a bow with the desks in the classroom, without Aina's help who stays watching the situation, but later Aina gives in due to guilt and helps them finish building the bow. As their operation is successful, both Yagi and Tanaka start to gain respect and become friends with Aina before going home. In the end, it is revealed that everything has been orchestrated by Sakamoto himself, who has pretended to be possessed all along, to bring the group of girls closer together. Mariyama and the upperclassmen delinquents intimidate the freshmen into becoming their servants. One of the servants is Sakamoto, whom they mistake for a first-year student and hope to take advantage of by putting him to work. Kubota tells Sakamoto that they are taking him for a fool because they consider errant boys as such, to which Sakamoto replies that it is to build character and that he must respect them for being older. Sakamoto takes the job very seriously and exceeds expectations with his tasks, which initially pleases Mariyama but then gets out of hand. Sakamoto's efficiency tires Mariyama of thinking up tasks for him, so he orders our protagonist to invent tasks himself to achieve Mariyama's comfort. Sakamoto listens and does so, being mindful of every step Mariyama takes to the point that he feels invaded and scared by Sakamoto's constant presence in every aspect of his life, leading him to eventually fire him. The second part of the episode takes place at Kubota's house. As expected, Sakamoto has perfect grades in all subjects, while Kubota's grades continue to drop, and he asks his friend Sakamoto for help studying for the upcoming exam. After our protagonist's first visit to his friend's house, Kubota's mother grows fond of Sakamoto and follows him around the house on every visit. For this reason, when visiting Kubota's house again to study, Sakamoto has to hide. Once at his house, Kubota remembers that he forgot a textbook and quickly leaves his house to look for it, leaving Sakamoto with a cell phone in case something happens and begging him to hide from his mother. But Kubota's mother manages to identify Sakamoto's footwear and starts searching for him throughout the house, while our protagonist tries at all costs to evade her, with great success. This situation depresses Kubota's mother, who finds a resemblance between Sakamoto and the character from her drama series. This gives Sakamoto an idea, who, with a camera and a disc, takes the opportunity to deceive his friend's mother, making her believe that he was now on television and therefore they could no longer see each other. After that incident, and trying to maintain the deception, Kubota and Sakamoto decide to study in the library. Kakuta, the physical education teacher of the class, targets Sakamoto, who always arrives at his class in the last seconds. He then sets out to catch our protagonist breaking school rules but fails every time he tries. Initially, he thinks Sakamoto is joining the delinquents in his class to smoke when they are actually making bubbles, then, he believes Sakamoto is dangerously playing with brooms when he is actually cleaning dust from the ceiling, as he is the only person who can reach that area due to his height. He finally gets his chance when he catches Sakamoto eating in health class and expels him, believing he has achieved his victory, but it is revealed that it was all a plan by the protagonist to be able to leave class and feed an injured bird. In cooking class, Kanachan finds a slug inside a cabbage, which Sakamoto skillfully disposes of. In art class, which consists of drawing each of the student's classmates, Aina is paired with Sakamoto, earning the envy of all her classmates. At the end of the drawings, Anya feels defeated when she sees the way our protagonist drew her, thinking he drew her as an orangutan, but then it is revealed that she misunderstood the perspective when interpreting the artwork because he actually drew her as a beautiful angel. A fire drill is declared at the high school, and all the students manage to evacuate, except Akan, who is locked in the bathroom. Then Sakamoto skillfully enters the building, taking all necessary precautions, and manages to rescue his classmate and he descends from the building with an improvised parachute. Akan and his delinquent classmates accidentally cause Sakamoto to fall through a hole they dug as a joke, and, worried, they start looking for him after his disappearance lasts for a week. They ask different people, and everyone says they have seen him but at no moment can they find Sakamoto. When they only find his button inside the hole, they assume that Sakamoto had used Akan's trap to get to the other side of the world, to Brazil. However, 
When the delinquents are in the hole trying to understand what happened, Sakamoto appears, commenting that he had entered the trap on his own, thinking they were digging for hot springs and believed he could help. When it's Sakamoto's turn to throw the softball, Kubota is accidentally hit, causing him to have a severe nosebleed. Sakamoto stops the bleeding by tearing off part of his shirt and wrapping it around Kubota's head, revealing a sculpted body that earns him the applause of his female classmates. Sakamoto walks through the high school halls followed by the sparkling glances of all his female classmates. Seeing this, Hayabusa asks about him and receives a reaction from Mariyama that borders on fainting as he is still traumatized from their last altercation. Then Hayabusa decides to go see Sakamoto. Due to a misunderstanding, Hayabusa believes that Sakamoto orders the girls from class 1 to 2 to attack him when they gather, and gets the impression that Sakamoto has taken control of the students of class 1 to 2. Hayabusa asks Sakamoto to meet him at the riverbed after class, but Sakamoto refuses, as he has cleaning duties. To force him to go, Hayabusa's classmates try to anger him by stealing his indoor shoes and his ruler, which he has named Smith, and leaving notes to give the impression that Hayabusa is the one who has done it. But none of these strategies work. Finally, Hayabusa's classmates discover that they need to take something important from Sakamoto and decide to cut his friend Kubota's hair, leaving him bald and traumatized. When Sakamoto finds him crying angrily, he decides to go to the meeting with Hayabusa. When they are about to fight, a police officer sees them, and Sakamoto uses the excuse that they are only playing Tiyoshi Sumo, which is a sumo pushing game with hands. The police officer accepts the explanation, and both he and Hayabusa's classmates remain watching the fight. Despite claiming they are only playing, Sakamoto fully intends to defeat Hayabusa in the pushing sumo, which leads to a serious combat under the rain, with Sakamoto emerging as the winner. After learning the truth, and incited by Sakamoto, Hayabusa and his classmates go to Kubota's house to apologize and give him seaweed to make his hair grow faster. Kubota then organizes a seaweed party with his mom and Hayabusa and his classmates. Sakamoto has a fever and, instead of resting in the infirmary, wears a tie made of Welsh onion. Three elementary school students follow Sakamoto on his way home, competing in street games like kicking a stone without letting it fall. Seeing Sakamoto's exceptional skills, they decide to follow him in the next game, which is to not stop stepping on the white line, and they go along a large part of the city, following their new hero, enjoying the journey and learning new tricks. However, they encounter an obstacle when the white line ends, but Sakamoto shows them a new strategy to overcome this obstacle, and the children are amazed. When the game ends, the children leave, not without first asking Sakamoto for his autograph. Megumi, Sakamoto's classmate and the representative of class 1 to 2, is in love with our protagonist and secretly takes photos of him because she does not dare to talk to him personally. In these photos, she discovers that there is an obsessed ghost following Sakamoto, but she does not know how to warn him without exposing herself and showing the photos. After a conversation with Kubota, she realizes that the ghost is just like her, observing Sakamoto from the shadows. In a series of consecutive photos, Megumi manages to read the ghost's lips and understands that it wants to give Sakamoto a message, which is that it likes him. Another common point between the ghost and Megumi. Finally, Megumi sets aside her embarrassment and tells him about what happened, thus also confessing her crush. Sakamoto takes it well and thanks her with a series of photocopies of his face in which she can read through lip reading that he says thank you very much. Megumi goes from secretly taking photos to being a photographer of Sakamoto in broad daylight. In the epilogue, Sakamoto helps the lunch lady promote her Neapolitan dishes through subliminal messages. In a video rental store, Akan and his friends trick Sakamoto into helping them rent adult videos. As expected, our proto surprises everyone and develops skillful strategies to enter the forbidden area, but also to prevent Aina and her classmates from noticing the movies he seeks to rent, while Akan and his friends give him directions by cell phone. However, the greatest difficulty arises when he has to face the store manager, who suspects that Sakamoto is still underage. Our proto manages to evade the questions, convince the manager, and successfully rent the movies. 
When it's all over, Akan invites Sakamoto to watch the rented videos together, but Sakamoto immediately escapes. Realizing that it is still too early for them, Akan returns the adult videos without watching them. During the sports day, Sarah tries to overcome Sakamoto's popularity, or at least, bring down her own, by sabotaging the events with the collaboration of the rest of the boys in class 1 to 2, convincing her classmates that it would be the best way to gain popularity among the girls. However, the plan backfires, as Sakamoto wins the events in style and, as a result, his popularity increases. In the relay race, Sarah ties both of Sakamoto's shoes so that he cannot run. Far from giving up, Sakamoto bites the baton with his mouth and runs like a cheetah on all fours. As he passes the baton, the baton slips out of Yagi's hand due to the baton being covered with saliva, causing them to fall to the last place and leaving him with a horrible feeling of guilt. Seeing Yagi crying while running, Sarah decides to erase Yagi's mistake from everyone's memory by making a more memorable event, running naked after passing the baton to him, much to everyone's disgust and dismay. Despite the disgusted comments of the classmates who watched the race, Sakamoto expresses some flattering words to him and Yagi thanks him for what he did, which makes Sarah blush. Mariyama, Hayabusa, and the upperclassmen delinquents try to participate in their school's cultural festival by making cotton candy with improvised materials. Akin suggests to Hayabusa that they invite Sakamoto to their stand, and Hayabusa seems to agree until Fukase, a delinquent with a strange past, interrupts and forces Hayabusa to talk about Sakamoto. Hayabusa remains silent about Sakamoto, and Fukase uses the cotton candy machine to injure Hayabusa. Meanwhile, in room 1-2, to two, the class struggles to make their own stand using balloons since they are not allowed to participate with food stalls. The class feels demotivated because the results are boring and lack style. Then Sakamoto takes charge of the event and begins to improvise different ways to use the balloons to make the presentations attractive and convincing. Everyone seems excited about the improvement of the presentation, as the more fun it is, the more people might come to the stand. Everyone seems excited, except for two slackers who apparently don't help their classmates and spend their time making negative comments and mocking those who are working. Annoyed by Sakamoto's participation, they leave the room. Fukase approaches them and suggests the slackers do something to damage Sakamoto's reputation. The next day, they destroy the balloons and scatter wanted posters all over the campus, accusing Sakamoto of the mishap. Sakamoto, now on the run, dodges the delinquents trying to catch him for the reward, and Fukase watches silently. When they are about to catch Sakamoto, Hayabusa and his friends appear on the scene to defend him and help him escape, as Hayabusa feels responsible for everything happening. Once safe, Hayabusa tells Sakamoto about Fukase and his dark past, a 30-year-old man, divorced twice, who always fails. It seems he doesn't often appear at school, but when he does, he sets up a game, and that's what he's doing now. His goal is to make people disappear one by one, always choosing the most popular from high school. In this case, his target is Sakamoto. Sakamoto decides to clear his name, goes to his room, and sees the slackers reorganizing his presentation. His classmates convince Sakamoto to admit the mishap, but he leaves. Later, a mysterious girl named AKO, literally meaning Girl A, calls his room anonymously and admits she popped the balloons. Seeing his plan threatened, one of the slackers says the girl is lying, but Michon points out they shouldn't know since they left early yesterday, thus exposing something strange was happening. When the slackers open the door, they discover Sakamoto using helium gas, and it was all a trap for the slackers. Now the whole class is against them as they can't justify their actions. Then, in a threatening manner, they try to pop the balloons, but Sakamoto cleverly intimidates them by popping them with sunlight reflected in Kubota's mirror. The confrontation ends when the slackers give up, and Sakamoto lectures them, and they admit they did it because they felt excluded. With no time and lacking materials, Sakamoto uses the remaining balloons with invitations tied to them and Hayabusa's cotton candy to make Yeti costumes, organizing a Yeti hunt. While Sakamoto, disguised as a yeti, runs down the hallway with the slackers, Fukase calls out to him, and Sakamoto returns the look. 
Megumi Fujita, along with Kana-chan and Michan, have lunch outside and begin to reminisce about how they met Sakamoto. Megumi met him during the entrance exam, where she was nervous and the coldness of her hands prevented her from concentrating on writing. However, when her eraser fell, Sakamoto caught it midair and heated it with the friction before returning it to Megumi, allowing her to concentrate on the exam again as the eraser provided the necessary warmth for her trembling hands. Michan met him on the day of the entrance ceremony when a storm broke her favorite umbrella. Initially saddened, her spirits were lifted when Sakamoto treated her broken umbrella like a wine glass and acted as a rain sommelier. Lastly, Kanachan encountered him the day before the entrance ceremony. Since she had forgotten her backpack, she was carrying all her textbooks in her hands, rendering her unable to see ahead. When she fell, Sakamoto caught the books and carried them in his arms as if he were carrying a princess. While the girls are captivated by Sakamoto's initiatives, Kubota, on his part, remembers his first encounter with Sakamoto, during which the bandage on his ring finger fell off and Sakamoto returned it as though he were putting on a ring. Sakamoto scolds Kubota's storytelling, but the girls, upon hearing Kubota's story, feel envious as their first meeting with Sakamoto was the most romantic. At a parents' meeting, Shigemi Kubota discovers that Sakamoto continues to attend school and remains friends with her son, contrary to what she believed after Sakamoto's deception during his last visit. When her son Yashinobu catches a cold, Shigemi seizes another opportunity to romantically pursue Sakamoto, her underage love interest. Taking advantage of her resemblance to her son, Shigemi wears his uniform and goes to school in his place. Although she has many opportunities to flirt with Sakamoto throughout the school day, Shigemi's efforts are thwarted at every turn. During her athletics class, Shigemi chases Sakamoto but falls, breaking her seashell necklace. Sakamoto picks up the pieces and realizes that his friend Yashinobu was actually his mother, Shigemi. Saving her from an awkward situation, Sakamoto returns her necklace to Shigemi, and at that moment, she realizes that she cannot fulfill her desires to be with Sakamoto and remembers that she is Yashinobu's mother, thus resolving to prioritize being a good mother. The next day, Yashinobu recovers, and Shigemi prepares a meal as exquisite as the one a mother would make. During Christmas Eve, two university students organize a triple date, which is hindered by the absence of a third companion to join them, and it's somewhat difficult to find someone single and free on a date like Christmas Eve. Then they spot Sakamoto from afar, who is at the shopping mall doing volunteer work, and they propose that he join the triple date, deceiving him by telling him it's a social gathering to learn new behavioral dynamics. Sakamoto is interested and accepts the proposal. At the date, they meet the three girls, and Sakamoto, as usual, catches their attention, as he has a very clear future plan, which is to work at NASA, and shows great sensitivity when playing with a hippopotamus toy. The university students seem to be jealous of the attention Sakamoto receives. But they also get in each other's way to see who can attract the girl's attention more at karaoke. However, jealousy seems to increase when Sakamoto imitates a saxophone sound only with his arm and mouth movements, a situation that delights the three girls. They then plan to embarrass our protagonist by ordering a soda that will cause Sakamoto to burp loudly, ruining his perfect image. Sakamoto follows precisely what the university students propose and starts to sing an operatic song from the famous poem Der Urkenig. The university students think this is their end because women do not like this type of music, however, our protagonist's voice is so powerful that it attracts not only the girls from the date but also an entire female audience that was in the place. Being chased by so many women, Sakamoto bids farewell to the university students, thanking them for the invitation to the social gathering. Hayabusa seeks Sakamoto's help when his father invites him to an elegant dinner with a woman who, according to him, is the candidate to be Hayabusa's stepmother. As Hayabusa does not know table manners and Sakamoto tells him that it cannot be learned in a single day, Hayabusa rents an XL-sized coat in which Sakamoto hides and uses his hands instead of Hayabusa's at the restaurant. In this way, he demonstrates being a man of fine manners and integrity. Pleased with the dinner's outcome, Hayabusa steps away from his father to leave him alone with his date. 
However, on the way home, they discover that Hayabusa's father is cornered by some thugs. Sakamoto and Hayabusa switch places to fight them, as Hayabusa had to defend his father without showing his face, as it would ruin everything achieved during the night by showing himself as a good fighter. The woman turns out to be an extortionist, and Sakamoto skillfully defends himself from them, seizing the opportunity to tell a horror story about a person who eats French cuisine and grows an extra pair of arms due to an allergy. Hayabusa concludes that, instead of pretending to have something they lack, they should compensate for what the other person is missing. While accompanying Sakamoto to school, Yoshinobu realizes that he knows almost nothing about Sakamoto, though he assures himself that there will be plenty of time to talk about it later. When learning that it's Sakamoto's first time seeing snow, Akian, who has had a lot of experience with snow, teaches him to play in it. However, in all new teachings, Sakamoto surpasses him. When making a snow figure on the ground, our protagonist improves upon the one Akian had made earlier, when they must make a snowman, Sakamoto creates one of great height and with many more snowballs than usual, giving it a body with curves that resemble certain movements. Akin feels frustrated because Sakamoto has surpassed him in everything he has taught quite easily, and he hoped this would be his chance to compete with Sakamoto on an equal footing. Seeing this, Fukase approaches Akin and suggests that he fight Sakamoto in a one-on-one -on -one battle. He then decides to fight Sakamoto in a snowball battle, determined to crush him. Again, Sakamoto's skills are extraordinary, and they reach a stalemate in the battle, causing Akin to start breaking down from the cold. In a last attempt, Akin decides to make a surprise attack but is hit by a snowball that ends the battle. Defeated and a bit embarrassed, Akin gets up and then notices that the snowball Sakamoto threw at him actually had warming patches, as he saw him shivering from the cold and wanted to lend a hand. Akin goes home, embarrassed and teary-eyed for having fought so hard trying to defeat Sakamoto, when for him it was always a game, and he even cared for his well-being by lending a hand. At that moment, Fukase approaches him again, trying to convince him that he wouldn't suffer so much if Sakamoto weren't in his presence. Classes 1 to 2 reminisce about their memories of the whole year by looking at the photos Megumi took, especially those of Sakamoto. Among the most notable events are the day Sakamoto made preparations for the umbrella, the marathon race day, and the day they went to the beach. Hayabusa and the other delinquents have a meeting and tell them that Fukase won't graduate again that year, so the next year they would be in the same course as Fukase. Hayabusa then starts advising the delinquents on how to survive the course with Fukase, because otherwise, he could destroy them. Mario and Ken Ken note that Akin has been acting strangely lately. In the room, Akin is lonely and frustrated, and it seems he has an internal struggle about his relationship with Sakamoto, as he wants to ask for his photos but restrains himself and gets angry at himself. At one moment, he manages to take one of the photos fallen on the floor and leaves the classroom. At that instant, Fukasa approaches Akin again and convinces him that his life would be better without Sakamoto, as since he appeared, Akin is losing his identity and ceasing to be himself, like when he started participating in school events, which is not typical of a delinquent like him. Fukase then convinces him to burn the photo, along with all his attachment to Sakamoto. In the epilogue, during the graduation ceremony, Akin approaches Sakamoto, who is still giving the farewell speech on stage, telling him to disappear, with a metal bat in his right hand. Continuing from the previous episode, Fukase talks with Atsushi, who convinces him to eliminate Sakamoto by burning the photo and his admiration for him. During the graduation ceremony, Sakamoto begins his graduation speech by presenting a volleyball that he has retrieved from above, showing from the start that this presentation would be different from the others, a situation that will aid him later. While speaking to the crowd, Akin, somberly disturbed, approaches Sakamoto with a metal baseball bat, ready to hit Sakamoto to destroy him. Akin randomly swings the bat at those who try to interfere in his assault on Sakamoto, and Fukase stops the teachers. With the audience shocked and thinking it's part of his presentation, Sakamoto extends his speech while dodging Akin's attacks until reaching the beams. Akin swings his bat again, but slips, and Sakamoto quickly grabs his hand. However, Akin hits Sakamoto's hand repeatedly with his bat until it bleeds and reproaches him through tears for belittling his personality. 
Sakamoto, injured, continues improvising his speech and tells everyone, including Akan, to believe in friends. Akan's hand slips, yet Sakamoto catches him, demonstrating Sakamoto's deep affection for his friends. The audience is delighted and gives Sakamoto a standing ovation. Akan surrenders as Hayabusa's group arrives. Sakamoto heads to the clinic to treat his wounds and speaks with Fukase for the first time. Fukase compares life after high school to a deep ocean while Sakamoto, full of hope, says he will swim through that deep ocean to find new opportunities. Hayabusa, who not only resents Fukase but also holds great affection for Sakamoto, is determined to end Fukase. He waits outside as Sakamoto approaches him and suggests a non-violent way to eliminate Fukase. As the graduates parade with Fukase watching, Hayabusa and his group enter and congratulate Fukase through a presentation that echoes the comments between Fukase and Sakamoto about swimming in the deep ocean. After that, Fukase leaves the school but is later seen on a beach holding a surfboard. As for Akan, everyone believed his actions were part of Sakamoto's presentation, and Sakamoto, Hayabusa, and the other delinquents understand his actions because he was incited by Fukase. Meanwhile, rumors swirl in the hallways, which turn out to be true, that Sakamoto is leaving, as he was selected by a space administration in America and will continue his studies to become an astronaut. Meanwhile, Class 1-2 bids farewell to Sakamoto by throwing pies, which Sakamoto easily dodges as he leaves the class with a single pie in hand. At the school's exit, Hayabusa meets Sakamoto and also bids him farewell. Following Sakamoto's departure, the students come up with different ideas for making a movie titled Haven't You Heard? I'm Sakamoto. Each of the characters begins to imagine what the movie about Sakamoto would be like according to their own interests. Aina, for example, imagines it would be a movie where both she and Sakamoto would be the protagonists, and the plot would revolve around their romance, which only exists in Aina's mind. Thus, Sakamoto's former classmates spend a long time theorizing and imagining a possible movie about Sakamoto. Later, upon finding photographic evidence that Sakamoto is in the United States, the students try to imagine what he is up to, from training to be an astronaut to being a student at a Martian Institute. All this always repeating the same pattern of the first episodes, but adapted to the forms and imagination of each one. In all the situations presented, Sakamoto stylishly overcomes his opponents, as expected. Meanwhile, what really happens is that in the United States, Sakamoto enlisted as a shuttle pilot. When departing, they encountered an obstacle as the rocket's fuel tank begins to have problems with a gas leak. Faced with such a situation, Sakamoto activates the ship's manual mode and manages to return the shuttle to its course, leaving a message in the sky with the rocket's smoke. Yes, I am Sakamoto.